start with who you are and how you became involved in the Highland Games. So I'm Joe Shepard. I'm a men's uh, Open B athlete. I've been throwing for three years now. I came to the Highland Games because originally I was a competitive power lifter and wound up suffering a career-ending injury there. But I loved strength sports and I had to find a way to continue doing the stuff I loved but without big static loads. Um, this, the right knee is now held together with high tension fishing lines so big heavy loads across the shoulders was a no-go. So powerlifting was done, strongman was out. So I decided to give the games a try and never looked back. Okay. Um, wish I'd found it 10 years ago. Yeah. So what do you think appeals to you the most about the games? Uh, the people primarily. I've met more great people doing this sport than anything else I've done as an adult. And you get to, you know, you're outside, you're in this fun festival atmosphere. You know, powerlifting meets are frankly boring. It's, you're sitting there in folding chairs in an elementary school gym auditorium for 10 hours waiting to compete for 60 seconds. With the games, you know, you're at a festival, there's pipes going, there's food, there's dancers doing the Highland Reel, and uh, it, it's like going to a Ren Fair where you're also competing in strength sports, and it's just so much more fun. You're outside, you have this fun festival atmosphere you're in, completely different world from what I was used to. Okay. So when it comes to practice, can you compare the time that you spent as a powerlifter in practice and the time that you spend now? Significantly less, I think. It's a, a little bit of a different because at, with powerlifting, the, the strength training was the sport. And so that was probably, I'd say, 10 hours a week of training for powerlifting. For the games, I'm training a lot at probably call it five hours a week, usually an hour Tuesday, Thursday, and then a th big three hour practice on Saturday. And I think I'm training much more heavily than your average thrower is. And add on to that probably another somewhere between two and six hours of strength work a week. So the sport specific is way, way less, but um, overall a little more time's going in, but that's also uh, gym time as well as sport specific training. Okay, I always wonder about this. The amount of strength training that's required to make you a, a great thrower versus the amount of technique. And I have my own belief on this, but what is yours? Oh, I think that's a very tough question because I think you can make up for shortcomings in one with the other. That if you are very strong, you can use that to paper over having poor technique. But at the same time, you know, I know plenty of guys that I'm a lot stronger to that outthrow me, you know, without doubt. You know, some of the more experienced lightweights, those guys will wipe my eye even though I weigh twice as much as they do. Both are important ingredients, but one, one or the other is not king. I think you need a little, I think you need a healthy mix of both. But at the same time, you know, I think you can come into this and get pretty far learning the technique without having to, you know, be the big burly power lifter type person. It helps, but it's absolutely not required. And so tell us a little bit about what it's like to begin. You are a sea thrower? Is that how you enter as a sea? Yeah. And tell us a little bit about that, the progression. So that was very, um, you know, the, the first time out, I'd been practicing for about six weeks, but my first games was Elizabeth in, that would have been summer of 2018. No, 2019. And so that was kind of, it was a lot of nerves. You know, it was the first time I kilted up and stepped on the field ever. And there's, you know, guys out there that had been, you know, have been doing this since I was in diapers and some of them even longer than that. And the whole atmosphere was very different. I didn't know what I was doing or, you know, I, I had an idea. I knew the events, but I'd never competed before. So it was a lot of stage fright first stepping out there. And then I got out there and, you know, started talking to my fellow C competitors and everyone was just so open and welcoming. It was at that festival and pretty much every other one, it was, there was no strangers, just friends you hadn't met yet. And then, you know, we had a very experienced judge that well-respected and 
pretty storied A thrower that you know likes to take the seas under his wing and taught us not just how to compete but was giving us tips and it was the kind of thing where a guy would out throw you and you clap him on the back and say hey great you know great throw even though he, he was pushing you off the podium with that throw hmm. and so the the sportsmanship was excellent the camaraderie was almost a little bit shocking um, coming from the powerlifting world it was a little more cliqueish and so you know there was a lot of yeah they took care of the first timers but you know there was a fair bit of you know oh i train with this i train at this gym so i'm going to talk to this group and everyone kind of had their own little circles in this in the games completely different Everyone was very open, very easygoing, and yeah, much, much better sportsmanship, much more welcoming. What is it that you do um, to survive and thrive on game day? Mentally, physically, emotionally? I've never had a problem with kind of getting the game face on. For me, it's mostly if you have a chance to get shade, sit down, refuel and recover, that little bit of energy you save there is energy that you can put forth on the field. So you really have to kind of husband your strength because it's an all day event. And, you know, it sounds like, oh yeah, you know, you got nine throws and other than, you know, the height events where you can keep racking it up, you've usually got three attempts at all those. But those add up over the course of the day. And, you know, the anything you can do to stay hydrated, stay fueled, and you know, preserve any little bit of muscular endurance. Absolutely do. So, yeah, hydration, sunscreen, shade, fueling, all super, super important. Because otherwise, you'll get to, you know, your second to last event and be gassed. And that reminds me, you and I talk a lot about recovery. Um, what are the things that you do to recover from training and also from game day? Uh, I mean, the recovery is just as important as the training in a lot of ways. Hydrate, make sure the electrolytes are good. I generally will take, uh, I'll steal, my wife's an endurance athlete, so we always have um, scratch and carb fuel in the house. Post game, get some kind of electrolyte in me. Gatorade's okay. I like, um, I'm a big fan of scratch myself because I think it's just a better, better electrolyte product. And then lots of food and you know, honestly, your, your typical hangover breakfast is a good post-games breakfast. Well, it's our post-games breakfast. We'll probably be a hangover breakfast, too, um, because <laughs> we like to party in this sport. <laughs> but, yeah, big breakfast, lots of protein, lots of carbs. Um, if I can do contrast therapy, you know, hot and cold soak, or, um, you know, when I travel to games, I try to find a place that has a hot tub, because I think that'll definitely help with the muscles um, and just getting all the knots out. I'm a big fan of percussion massagers, um, you know, the Theraguns, or um, I've got a little bit more moderately priced one, uh, an Ekron B37, they're about 200 bucks, and it's been the best 200 bucks I've ever spent, because everything is going to be knotted up and sore and hurting, and so some contrast therapy and some sort of massage are my go-tos for recovery. It's, it's a great sport, it's kind of niche, mm -hmm. I wish more people would try it. You know, I think there's a lot of, since we are a bit theatrical in this sport, I think there's a lot of stage fright. People are like, oh, that looks so much fun, but I could never bring myself to be up there in front of a couple hundred people with a kilt throwing a log. Give it a try. Well, how do you get over your stage fright? Uh, focus, on, focus on what you're doing at the, in the moment, you know. When you're turning a caber at Estes Park, there's 2,000 pairs of eyes on you. All I think about is the log where, you know, when, when's this one a turn? What's my pick gonna look like? What's my approach gonna look like? When am I gonna pull? You just put yourself completely in the moment and then the rest kind of takes care of itself. Let's talk a little bit about competition because this is a different kind of competition than people are used to. If I make the podium, that's great. That's not something that's ever really in my mind when I'm getting ready to throw. When I'm stepping out on the field, I have the numbers that I wanna hit in mind and so long as I hit those numbers, that's all I care about. You know, whether I come in first place or DFL, mm -hmm. you know, if I hit that, you know, 90 foot light hammer, or if I hit that 48 foot weight for distance, you know, I'm happy on that day. Um, so you're competing against yourself? Very much so. You know, I mean, my last games of 2021 was Estes Park, and I think I came in fifth place out of an eight man field, but 
I had, you know, a PR on weight over bar and uh, caper. And, you know, so even though I was in the basement in terms of the standings, because it was a tough field, like I was pretty happy with my performance on the day because I hit the numbers I wanted to hit. Okay. How do you determine what numbers you're going to use as that, that mark? How do you personally do that? Generally, I look at what I've been throwing in practice, and then I'm going to add for distance events, you know, somewhere between three and five feet. Like, hey, I know I can hit this, so we're going to push ourselves just a little further, and we're going to try and hit this next number up here. That is a stretch goal, but it's still doable. Well, let's talk about PRs. So when you get a PR in the field at a game, how do you feel about that? Really good. Like, it's that sense of accomplishment that, you know, all of the work that I have put into this with the strength training, with the technique training, all those hours of practice and weightlifting finally paid off. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, all right, great, I feel awesome. Now I want another one. <laughs> right, you know, I it's got addictive. <laughs> I got 11 foot on weight over bar, great. Now I want 11.6, now I want 12. Tell me what your most favorite event is. Uh, caber, hands down. Okay. Caber is just <laughs> fun. I think I have a little bit of a knack for it. I. You know, I can read the I can read the stick. I know what it's doing, where it wants to go, when it wants to turn, and I think I just kind of do that naturally. It's physical, it's technical, because you know people think, oh, you're just throwing a log. No, there's a lot that goes into turning that log, and you know everything from you know math, physics, just getting that sense of taking it turning, and you know it's the the crowd gets lit up when you throw a perfect 12 and it is you know this very physical almost kind of primal thing of picking this log up and taking a run and turning it and then hearing the roar of the crowd when that 12 o'clock comes up there's there's nothing better on the field right what is the biggest stick that you've turned so far uh, the biggest one I've turned was the m4 you have so that was 18 feet 6 and about 80 something pounds. Okay. So out of the distance events, what are your favorite? What is your favorite? I think my favorite would probably be light hammer. Um, it's, again, it's one of those things that's super technical, but when you get the form down and it feels right, and then, you know, watching the hammer leave your hand and sail 80, 90, 100 feet down range and land is just such a satisfying feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you do it? Weight for distance? Weight for distance is good. I like lightweight a lot. Again, it's one of those very technical throws that it takes a lot to master and there's a lot of accomplishment when you finally do get that two turn down and are throwing, you know, 40s and 50s, mm -hmm. which I mean, for me is good numbers. How do you feel about the vertical events? I like sheaf. Sheaf is fun. Being an open athlete, I'm throwing the four stone heavyweight. So anything involving the 56 is an event I have to do rather than an event I want to do. <laughs> so um, heavyweight for distance and wob are the, the throws I have to do to get to enjoy all the other stuff. What has been your favorite game so far? That's really tough to say because I've had a ton of fun at all of them. Estes Park in 2019, I think was my favorite one. Um, you know, they had... That was your first year, too? Wasn't that was my first year, and I mean, you know, Estes really is the, the big show for the Rocky Mountain West, so, you know, there was... <laughs> they had so many people at the festival, they ran out of beer, I remember. <laughs> they said they had 50,000 through the gates per day, and most of them at least swung by to see the athletics field going on, and, you know, they've got the, the pipe band competition going, and, you know, it was like this county fair meets renaissance festival and I'm throwing in front of thousands of people and even though I'm just a nobody see you know the crowd's still roaring when I turn a caber and just the whole atmosphere was just electric there was so much good energy flowing around that day that it was great all right so final words it's a, a wonderful sport I've met some of the most interesting people doing it I've had so much fun doing it you know it gets you it gets you out of the house you're out in the sun you're seeing people that you would never probably interact with in the course of your day-to-day -day life. And, you know, I've made, in just the few short years I've been doing it, I've made more lifelong friends doing this than anything else I have done. And everyone should give it a try.
the the running joke in my house, um, you know, because I'm into cross dressing and throwing boulders and cannonballs at people. Uh, my wife does long distance triathlon, and we always like watching, you know, like American Ninja Warrior or ultra or ultra marathoners. And you know, the running joke is, ah, see what we do is normal. Those people, those are the crazy ones. <laughs> Someone looking, someone on the outside looking in, like, so wait, you put a kilt on and you throw cannonballs on chains at each other? Well, not at each other directly, but yeah, it looks a little weird, but give it a try. Because even though it seems so oddball, you'll have a blast doing it.